Good morning and welcome to worship. Welcome to worship with Trinity Lutheran. I'm Pastor Amy, and I'm so happy to be worshiping with you today. Today is our first in-building, in-person service for a while, and we're going to be continuing our online worship as well. Welcome to all who come before Christ with Trinity. I invite you to have your bulletin in front of you, and if you don't have one yet, one may be found at our website, which is www.tlcmonticello.org. And there are children's bulletins, too, for your use. You can choose whichever age appeals to your little ones. And with that, I invite you to open our worship with song. Let us sing, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness, for it is morning, verses 1 and 3. ascended Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and, and also with you. you. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your Spirit, transform us and your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we hear the word as it is read to us from Scripture. The first reading is from the book of Acts. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two. Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The second reading is from 1 John. If we receive human testimony, 
the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Good morning, kids. It's time for the children's message. Come on up. Get a little closer. Sit right here by me. Today is a special day. We are recognizing Ascension Day, when Jesus commanded his disciples to go and share the good news, and then as he was talking, he was lifted up into the air, and he wasn't seen after that. But his spirit was felt after that. Ascension, that's a pretty big word. Can you say ascension? Ascension, that's right, today is Ascension Day, which basically means lift it up. Well, I've got a little container here with some clear liquid in it, and I want to show you a demonstration. Perhaps if you've been at the last couple of Sundays, you've heard me talking a lot about what? A lot about fruit. Yes, Pastor Amy has been talking about fruit, how we are to bear fruit for Jesus and how we are to harvest the fruit and the seeds of our fruit become more seeds. So I have some what? Some fruit. Some, what are these? That's right, they're grapes. I have grapes. Red grapes. Well, what happens to grapes? when they get dried out. Do you know? We were talking about being dried up fruit sometimes, haven't we? Well, what happens to grapes is they become what? Raisins. Yes, I have some raisins. Can you hear them? I have some raisins here also. Well, I'd like to show you what happens as Jesus taught his disciples for all those years as they walked around the Holy Land and talked to people. Jesus was pouring out his spirit onto the disciples and to those that they encountered. Can you see? It's getting kind of fizzy. It's bubbling up. That's right, we say we bubble up with the Spirit. Well, that's kind of how it was in the years that Jesus walked with his disciples. And they were like big, fat grapes, filled, juicy, wonderful. Well, then came the time when Jesus was crucified and he was risen he spent 40 days with them, and then he said, it's time for me to go back to the Father. Well, it's interesting because they thought they had received all that they needed from Jesus and from the Spirit. They were like fleshy grapes, yummy grapes. I'm going to put one right in here and another one. And another one, I'm not going to put in 12, but do you see what happened? Oh, that's right. They raised to the surface, didn't they? They went all the way to the bottom, and then they came up because they were filled with the Holy Spirit that was shared when Jesus taught them the Word of God. Well, in time... 
in time, these grapes dried out. And they knew that they would need more spirit from Jesus. But if Jesus was going to go back up to God, what would happen? Well, let me show you. Jesus said, go and tell my story. And even if you're dried up grapes and you use all your energy to tell other people about me, Hmm. It's going to take some time. You're going to, oh. You see that they're rising and falling again? Can you see that? That's right. These dried up raisins are being filled with the Spirit. Just like Jesus knew that his disciples would be if they proclaimed the good news everywhere they went. And God gave them the energy to rise again and keep going. Now, if we waited and watched this, they're going to be rising, and then they're going to be falling, and they're going to be rising, because the bubbles in the carbonation are kind of like how the Spirit fills us up and keeps us going, even when we're feeling flat. See how those? There we go. And that's our lesson for today. So go and proclaim and tell the good news, and Jesus will keep lifting you up. Shall we have a prayer? You can repeat after me if you feel comfortable. Dear God, Dear God, Thank you for your love and care. Thank you for your love and care. Thank you for new life we share. Thank you for new life we share. Help us tell your story to others. Help us tell your story to others. And we ask you bless our mothers. And we ask that you bless our mothers. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, kids. Thanks for coming up. You can return to your seats. Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to whole creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and proclaimed the good news everywhere. Well, the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that accompanied it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you O Christ. Christ. Grace and peace to you this glorious morning. Amen. Our Gospel for today is rarely read as the so-called tacked on ending to the book of Mark, most scholars give it little weight and little time. Yet it is this interesting addendum to the Bible 
that we read today because it is a simple description of Jesus Christ's departure from this world and his return to the right hand of the Father. Now you may have realized that this is not our usual gospel for today, the last Sunday of Easter. And you are right. For today we read the gospel that around the world Christians read on Thursday. But most of us were not in church reading scripture on Thursday. Some of us were hanging drywall in the church building on Thursday. Some of us were tending the church gardens on Thursday. And some of us were in school or at working from home or just headed home from college or working our nine to five or maybe even getting our own gardens ready. But I would venture a guess that I could count on one hand how many of us went to church on Thursday. I can't even count myself. For the significant event commemorated this Thursday largely passes by unnoticed in this country. In many countries like Belgium or Indonesia or Germany, this is a holiday. A banks are closed holiday. In Finland, you might have even gotten a floater day for this past Thursday. That sounds kind of nice, doesn't it? But here in American churches, it's most commonly ignored, skipped over, coming 40 days after Easter and the resurrection, and 10 days before Pentecost, which we will celebrate next weekend. Jesus Christ's return to God goes mostly unnoticed. And honestly, that's why we're talking about it today, because almost without fail, it's a question that comes up when I teach confirmation to middle schoolers. So what happened to Jesus after he rose from the dead, Pastor Amy? Did he die again sometime later? And if he didn't, where is he now? It's not a scripture text that we read very often and that we teach even less. And yet this little add-on scripture affects our culture all the time. It is deeply embedded in our understanding of what is good and what is heavenly and where we want to be. Who can deny that we live in a wannabe up world? A world where almost in any case, up is better than down. When we're expected to be upbeat and we're expected to upcycle and who doesn't want an upgrade? Many of us want to be upstanding citizens, and some of us work for upstarts. Where do you want to stand after the fields have been fertilized? None other than upwind, of course. So then the Lord Jesus was taken up into heaven. That's what our scripture says. Yes, we live in a world in which up is better than down. It's way more than that cute animated movie, Up, from 10 years ago or so. Over and over and over again, society tells us up is better. We celebrate when the stock market is what? Up. Uptown is hipper than downtown. And singers want to move up the charts. Athletes want to be up near the top of the draft. And just about everyone would rather have an up day than a down day, wouldn't you? We want to live ascended lives. We want to break free from the things that hold us down and to rise above it all. It seems almost human nature to want to ascend in any form 
we can, just like the grapes. In any form, we cherish as good and heavenly. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because something within us knows that we are more than earthbound creatures. Perhaps Jesus knew that about his disciples, knows that about us today. Because before he is taken up, he gives one last instruction. Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. And then one last nudge. In my name, you will cast out demons, speak in new ways, pick up snakes, survive poison, heal people. Because heaven is assured to all who believe. Your up is coming. For a believer, your ascension, like the resurrected life in Christ, is assured. You don't need to do anything more. Just believe in the crucified, risen, and ascended Jesus Christ. And then one day, the ultimate up is yours. But first, there is much work to be done so that all the world can know this ascended life. All can know Jesus. All can know light and life and freedom and up. And it may mean that we have to speak in new ways and pick up and run with some hurtful snakes and survive some poison that tries to kill the gospel. But Christ will give us the words, just like he gave Peter in the first lesson. And Christ will give us hearts for testimony, like in the second reading. And all the fear, anger, resentment, disease, hatred in the world, all that weigh people down, can be released by the word of God, spoken and lived by those of us already uplifted by Christ. People of God in Monticello, in Big Lake, in Elk River, in Buffalo, and beyond, well, we are invited, commanded really, to go. To go into the world and to proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The world needs to hear. The world needs to be helped. The world needs a hand up. The hand of the Father the hand of the Son, the hand of the Spirit, through our hands. Let us worship today. Let us give thanks to God and be filled with the power of Christ. Then let us go to find those that this world has pulled down or continues to pull down, so that we, like Christ himself, become agents of freedom and ascension for others. To God be the glory. Amen. Church on earth, let us profess our faith. I believe, believe in, God, in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy, Holy Catholic Church, Church, the communion, communion of saints, saints the, the forgiveness, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and to answer us in steadfast love. Holy God, in Christ Jesus, the joy of the church is made complete. Root the church in your word. Unify us as Christ's body and strengthen us to do your work and share your gospel. Send us into the world as your loving people, ready to testify to your spirit at work. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Mighty God, the world is your handiwork, displaying your creative impulse. Seas teem with life, and forests reach up to praise you. And the mystery of life lies deep in the soil. Guard and keep this world for the well-being of all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Generous Savior, you befriend those who are sick, suffering, poor, lonely, outcast, or rejected. Grant healing and love to all in need, especially those on our prayer list and with the Anderson family as Joanne was laid to rest this past week. Give them your tangible signs of steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we receive our morning's offering, giving back to God a portion of what God has gifted to us, ourselves, our time, our talent, and our finances. And we thank Harry for our musical offering today as he plays Abide With Me. So that is our prayer. Thank you. 
Having received our morning's offering, let us offer a prayer of thanksgiving. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with your blessings, and as you have raised us to new life in Jesus Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. It's the time in our worship for the announcements when I have a chance to bring your attention to a few things in your bulletin and a few things that perhaps are not. But I invite all the community to celebrate with Trinity and our confirmands next week, the 23rd, because we're celebrating Pentecost, the coming of the Spirit, as well as the rite of the confirmation. Registration in advance is required, and so I invite you to sign up today after worship or sign up online on signupgenius.com. But also remember, wear your red. The Tuesday morning Bible study resumes this Tuesday, May the 18th, at 9 o'clock right in the library. And walk and roll is coming back, rolling back as we have in the past. Saturday, June the 12th, from 9 until 12, rain or shine, Trinity will be part of walk and roll. We'll have a table set up along the route, and if you can help, please contact the office. You've heard me announce a number of times, but the Strawberry Festival is coming up in June the 19th, 12 to 3 at this place, as well as we need volunteers and donations. There's the bulletin board or certainly online sign up at Sign Up Genius too. And that's all the announcements that I have for today. There are certainly more in your bulletin and in your newsletter. Christ is alive, the Christians sing, the cross stands empty to the sky, but streets and homes with praises ring, love drowned in death shall never die. In every insult, rift, and war, where colors torn or well divine, Christ suffers still, yet loves the more, and lives where we live and hope has died. Christ is alive. I send you forth with an Easter blessing and dismissal. May our glorious God grant you the spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. And may the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.